my fellow Satanist, and 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 I just wanted to point out, as I did in the other video, uh, I'll also leave it linked up in the description section if you didn't see the expose that caused Marilyn Manson to actually tweet it. Uh, but in it, I talked about how he is a member of the Church of Satan, and the Church of Satan is uh, public about the fact that they have a war against Christianity. They are using satanic propaganda through television in and media as a way to infiltrate the families and take over to eradicate Christianity. Marilyn Manson has publicly stated that he uh, wants to be the reason that Christianity is wiped off the face of the earth. He uh, would love to be responsible for that. So I, in my expose, I talked about that, how the Church of Satan, which he is a member of, has a plan to eradicate Christianity through media. So I just basically exposed the truth, and that's probably why he didn't say anything. He knows what he's doing. He knows he's working for this church. Uh, he knows he's creating satanic propaganda. He knows the influence of music. This individual is really aware of what he's doing, and here he is wearing the Freemasonic Illuminati ring. Um, so I just wanted to point out a few things to maybe even Marilyn Manson if you're listening or your fans um, you all live by a philosophy which is uh do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Aleister Crowley, uh, one of the people that you probably all look up to, uh, coined this saying when he was channeling the book of the law, channeling Satan himself. Uh, but let's just sit, sit back for a second. Uh, my fellow Satanist, and I'm 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 my fellow Satanist. Right now, and like, you know, him saying that, me making a little video about him and exposing him, whatever, is going to make me five bucks on my YouTube account for fame and fortune there. Like, get over it, buddy. You know what? I'm not even gonna monetize this video all right so check this out he gave me a holy bible king james reference all right and he also gave me devotions of godly guys of uh you know this is a good book it's a nice book you know what else he gave me check this out i'm burning this by the way i don't even know why i still have it freemason illuminati bible it says holy bible Freemason Illuminati compass and this thing is old somebody got married in this Bible look at this bud 33 degree Freemason Bible right off Mario's bookshelf and you can probably see it in his older videos my fellow Satanist and 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 What's up guys? Andre from Entertainment. A lot of you have been waiting for this for a long time, so I finally did it. Tonight is October 31st, 2016. It is Halloween. What are we doing tonight? Come here, let me show you. We're going to be burning a Satanic Illuminati Freemason Bible. This is what we're burning tonight, guys. This thing is approximately almost 100 years old. For those of you who have a little couple of doubts, it doesn't get any more realer than this. Halloween 2016, you're watching A Entertainment, burning the Freemason Satanic Illuminati Bible. I'm my fellow Satanist, and 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 I'm my fellow Satanist. You all live by a philosophy which is do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Aleister Crowley, one of the people that you probably all look up to, coined this saying when he was channeling the book of the law, channeling Satan himself. But let's just sit back for a second, my fellow Satanist, and really think about this. Now, first of all, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. For the majority of my life, this is how I lived my life, doing what I wanted. I didn't care. Um, I wasn't going to obey God. I didn't even care about God. I was going to live my life the way that I wanted to. Uh, you know, if someone was weaker or that, I'd just overpower them and take over because, you know, that's nature, that's life, too bad, right? So I spent a lot of my life living this personal philosophy, and this is the personal philosophy of Satanism, that an individual will do as they want, as if that's an, a good thing, but it's not. And I challenge you that. To do your own thing is a destructive and rebellious path 
to live on. It is not the path that leads to life, blessing, and goodness. It is the path that leads to self-destruction. It's the it's the devil's path. I'm my fellow Satanist, and 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 I'm my fellow Satanist. And Satanist and I'm my fellow 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 Satanist and I spent a lot of my life living this personal philosophy and this is the personal philosophy of Satanism that an individual will do as they want as if that's an, a good thing but it's not and I challenge you that to do your own thing is a destructive and rebellious path to live on it is not the path that leads to life blessing and goodness it is the path that leads to self-destruction it's the it's the devil's path My fellow Satanist, and I'm 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 my fellow Satanist. Now, this woman here, her name is Francine Brisson. Uh, she's Mario and the Vigilant Christian's mother. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, this must be Halloween. You know, oh, look, she's got the hands up and. You know, she's having a bit of fun, you've got the witches there, you know, scarecrows, funny little guys there and all this, right? The the, the um, spiders and all that kind of stuff. And on her chest there she has um, a symbol, which is a cult. Um, well, basically this is here, is on the 7th of October. It's not Halloween at all. And it's 2015. So they're celebrating something on the 7th. Now you guys know who are involved with the occult. That the number 7 is very important to them. Okay. So I basically. Um, here I have basically looked up. The MasonicDictionary.com. Numbers 2. And this is, this tells us about what the, the number 7 symbolizes. Okay. Now, the symbolic seven is to be found in a hundred ways over the whole Masonic system. Here it says, seven is referred to, to in practically all of the ancient religions. And these are pagan religions back in, in uh, the olden days. There were seven altars before the god Mithras. In the Persian mysteries, there were seven caverns. The gods had seven deities. And in the Gothic mysteries, the candidate met with seven obstructions. So there you go. There you have it. So we just keep going. That's that one there. Okay. So the next one I wanted to show you. Remember we talked about the occult camps. Now this was obviously before this young man here on uh, Andre got saved because he he didn't get saved until very recently so yeah so they were at this camp okay now as you can see there's Mario and there's all the drinking going on and they're all half naked I'm sorry for if that some of it is offensive but this is what they're doing they're out in the summer this is the camp where they'll build build the fire and they'll be doing stuff okay um and i know this because he said 
this guy here, Andre, said that it's usually in May that they meet to do the ritual. Okay? Okay, so here, that's another one that's proven it to you. Now, this man here is Mario Brisson's father. Now, this man's name is Marc Brisson. Now, Marc Brisson is, this is not Halloween. This is actually Christmas Day that they put this up. I got this from his website, or it's from his Facebook page. Actually, it's from his wife's Facebook page. So this was put, put up on Christmas Day. As you see here, we've got this occult paraphernalia. We've got the mummy, okay? We've got the candles with the skull and the bones on that, which is occultism, okay? Now, if there's anything there else that's occultism, I'll pro I, I can't see it here at the moment, but that should tell you a lot. The mummy, the dead mummy, because in occultism, they use stuff like from Egypt. That would be from the likes of Egypt and stuff like that. So that was on Christmas Day. So it's not, this is not Halloween stuff. This is very weird, to say the least, and very satanic. Why would anyone have a mummy in their house? I could understand if it was Christmas, if it was Halloween. But even then, I'd be thinking, oh, hold on a minute, but this is not Halloween. Okay, so this is something more to go on here. Now, this again is Marc Bresson, Mario's father. This was taken on the 7th of October, so it's not Halloween. Now, I know you've seen Eyes Wide Shut, that movie where they dress up with these masks and everything, right? And they get all dressed up and they go to these parties and they do these rituals. What he's dressed like is actually ready for a sex ritual, okay? And this is what Freemasons do, all right? And, and people that are involved with the occult. So the next person, the next thing I want to show you here, this is Mario getting drunk with his buddies on the 16th of May, 2015. Now, this is when he was meant to be five years a Christian. Obviously, at the time, in the 2016 one, Andre didn't go to it because he'd gotten saved. He didn't go. Right. But you see again, it's May. They always meet in May. Okay. The fifth month. And there is Mario looking absolutely out of it. Drunk. There's a girl holding the beer. She looks drunk as well. And it's night time. And this is where they have their camp and ritual. My fellow Satanist, and 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 my fellow Satanist. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, Vinny, uh, I'd like to go with uh, you first. Now, we've uh, discussed you on my channel. Uh, obviously, um, you know, uh, my audience has an, an opposition to uh, you. Uh, but let's go ahead and hear your story. Can you just share, uh, you know, your journey and everything uh, and what got you to this point? Well, there is like, <laughs> there's many doctors that uh, tied in to my uh, Vinny aesthetic. Um, but it really started when I was younger and I just realized I wasn't the same as everyone else. Um, I was a queer young person um, growing up also in a Catholic school and I just didn't feel like I connected to everyone else and I just felt very judged by my faith, I felt very judged by everyone and judged by my image because I was also this little small and lanky and I had this vision of how I wanted to become after puberty and it didn't happen, I just didn't look the way I thought so um, at around like 15, 16 I was like I'm just gonna get a bunch of work done and become my vision of Vinny and Vinny O. Um, so I just kind of went on a quest for that and as time kind of like um, came I developed this sense of kind of like Martian galaxy realness, little sci-fi, a little sexy like life and um, that just triggered me on this whole new adventure. Um, for the freaks and the weirdos and people that don't feel like they um, fit in, uh, it's all love. And so I just kind of developed that and uh, was 
with that also came my image that I've been working on since I was so young. Um, so yeah. Awesome. So uh, a main thing that you've been uh, really uh, talked about in the media was that you're really trying to be a genderless alien. Could you explain a little bit about where that comes from and maybe what you're trying to achieve with that? Yeah, of course. Um, I, as a, just, I just, I never felt, no, that, how do I start the statement? I have always felt just as a human, uh, just as a, as a, as it made it a two-spirited soul, I've always felt like I have a genderless, like I'm Vinny, I'm Vinny O, and I... He doesn't feel that he's a man or a woman, for sake, yeah. just for people to understand right. that yeah. there's not people who are listening out there. Uh, he does not want to be associated with a gender. Okay. Right, and the term gender, like the gender role, like I don't really have the gender complete role of a man, I don't have the gender role of a woman completely, I'm kind of like a perfect in-between in my eyes, so right. I thought like why not just make it a thing to go genderless and sexless, so by removing my genitals um, and to come into that. I also pushed through that surgery um, and kind of like nail it through media and um, make it really public that I want to do that because uh, these procedures to transition aren't perfected yet, and we're in 2017, so I am pushing this sexless surgery, this sexual unassignment, so that we can further um, the sciences of SRS, um, which is sexual reassignment. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just want to clarify why I would use the term satanic, because I didn't mean to offend anyone. Uh, when I use it, it's to define something that would be against God. If you actually look at the, the definition in God or the Bible. Uh, so when I was using it, uh, it was to describe the um, uh, the aspect of uh, how you perceive beauties. Okay, so there you've seen Mario talking with the gender, genderless alien, um, the guy who has the things in his eyes. I know, I, I have to apologize, I know that those pictures, the, that video is creepy, um, and it's definitely satanic. And, you know, I just want to start off by saying this, that yes, indeed, Jesus went to the sinners. He really did. He went in and talked to the sinners. But Jesus is God. And what Jesus said to the sinners was 100% perfect. He went and he preached the gospel with them. He didn't get involved with their sin. He sat with them and he preached the gospel. And he spoke to them in parables and he told them stuff, right? So that's what Jesus did. Jesus went around healing the sick, preaching the gospel and all of this stuff, right? Now, I just wanted to read some scripture from the book of Luke. And this is them sending out, Jesus sending out the apostles, right? Um, and this is what he says to them. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey. Neither staffs, nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece, and whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whatsoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet, for a testimony against them. Now Mario invited those people on to have an interview with them. And Mario never shared any kind of gospel with them. He just interviewed them. So let's see what scripture has to say about this, okay? Now we're going to look at Ephesians 5, okay? King James Version. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet, sweet smelling savour. Now, of course, Jesus Christ died for those three people in that video. He died for them. But they need to hear the true gospel. The true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, um, for a sweet smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. You're not to even name those things. You're not to even talk about them. Okay, verse 4, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, 
nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So what's God saying here? You're not to talk about a fornication. You're not to talk about anything unclean or covetousness or um, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Now the stuff that they were talking was foolishness and filthy. Talking about changing their body private parts. I mean good grief. Nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. This is what Mario is doing. But because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. But no, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye in the light. Now ye are, sorry, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And okay, so for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So he telling us as Christians. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whosoever doth make manifest is light. Okay, so that's that scripture there. God is telling us not to talk like this. Right? We're not to we're not to have our mouths involved in unclean speech and um, filthy speaking, which is what we just heard was filthy. And really, we're not supposed to talk like that. And that's what Maria was doing. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians. The Bible, he said, Oh, I don't want to cause you any offence or anything like this. The Gospel is an offence to those who are perishing. The scripture says, 1 Corinthians 1, 17-9, King James Version, For Christ sent me not to baptise, but to preach the Gospel. Not with wisdom of words, that the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Oh, Kate, uh, Katie, Katie, uh, what is your opinion on eternal torture? Yo, Joe, don't touch that. Uh, slash hellfire. So basically, notice how he says eternal torture, and that to me is like the biggest mockery of God's justice. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took all of our sin with him on the cross. And he took the consequences. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. You know, I mean, I am, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So th Jesus also said, narrow is the road that leadeth to salvation, and few there be that find it. When Jesus went to the cross, um, what happened was, he died in our place so that we would not have to go to hell eternal because of because our spirits are forever so let's continue with this a lot of people because um now you know uh i don't say i'm a theologian i don't tend uh to uh hopefully you don't don't say i'm a theologian but get that from me that i go out here and like say that i have 100 percent doctrine but there yes you do mario you say that all the time and you mock people who um, disagree with you you even disagree with the bible for goodness sake 
There's some videos where uh, at that point in my walk, and I guess still now, I haven't really visited the subject again in a while, but I was uh, looking at the um, possibility, uh, essential. well, what is it? What does the Bible teach? Now, I believe there's hell. Clearly in the Bible, it talks about hell, uh, but is it eternal? See, yes, it is eternal. It says it in the book of Revelation that it's eternal forever and ever. Let's continue. Because I struggled. I, I'm a pretty smart dude. Okay, so I struggled. Yeah, you're smarter with God. You're smarter than God. You're smarter than the Bible. You're smarter than the essentials of the Christian faith that have been around for 2000 years. You're more smarter than the whole of the historical essential Christianity that we've had for 2000 years. Now all of a sudden we have 31 year old little Mario comes to tell everyone, oops daisy, oh no, it's really annihilationism. Yeah, we all just get burned up into dust. Can you just see how ridiculous this is? This man is, is, is a created being. Like, and he's so full of pride, and this is why he's so full of Lucifer. And you heard him say, I, you heard him say, um, my fellow Satanists. I actually did some research, and that's what they call each other, my fellow Satanists. So let's continue on with this nonsense, but anyway. ...on a logical level with this, because on the one hand it says, well, that Jesus gives us eternal life, okay? Well... How is it then that the wicked are going to have eternal life as well? Okay, so a person who's heard the gospel, even a baby Christian, un has to understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross. They have to understand this. They have to understand that Jesus went to the cross, took our place so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. And when I got saved, I knew that that hell was eternal because the Holy Spirit took the veil away from my eyes and I went, oh, heaven, hell, demon, devils, soul forever, all of that just went, whoo, and I knew within an instant that I was a filthy, rotten sinner, that I was going to go to hell if I didn't repent, and when I did repent that Jesus forgave me and that I was going to be with him forever, I even understood that there was a trinity, and that all happened within a few, I could say within a few, not even a minute, it was very quick, it just went whoo, and I knew that I knew that I knew that this was the truth, because why? Because the Holy Spirit had opened, took the veil away from my eyes, he um, lifted me up out of my my dead body, my body was dead in sin, and the problem is with Mario, Mario is still in his sin, because Jesus said that the, na the natural man cannot understand the word of God. And if he's trying to just use his natural mind, which he's trying to do and which he does do, he's going to come up with all kinds of weird ideas. So let's continue. Because you would have to, if you're going to burn in hell forever, be also given eternal life. And when I would look at the verses in the Bible, it would talk about perishing. It would talk about the wicked being ashes. Um, so, you know, a lot of Christians think, oh, wow, you're a heretic for believing this. Uh Do you see the way he mocks it? Oh, you're a heretic for believing this. The fact of the matter is, he's mocking it because he wants you to be controlled into thinking his way. I want you to think about this. If you're a teenager, or you're an adult, right? Now, I'm 14, I'm 48, I'll be 49 next month, but I'm 48 years of age. And even as a 48 year old woman, a lot of people in the world would say, oh, middle aged coming into, you know, the later years, which I am. But still, I'm only 48. Compare that to eternity. Compare that for, to forever, that I'm worshipping a God that has always been there and has never not been there. That means he's been there for over trillions and trillions, because I don't even have a number for how long he's been there. And this fool, and I'm sorry, but this man is a fool. The Lord says a fool in his heart says he believe there is no God. But this fool is telling you, and he's only 30 years on this earth, 31 years on this earth, and of how many years, 11 years an adult, or 12, 13, 13 years an adult, 
and he thinks in his 13 years, and he's only supposedly a Christian seven years, that he's going to tell you now that there is no hell when all, all of Christianity from 2,000 years ago has said that there is an eternal hell. And that God himself said that there was an eternal hell. And he's going to tell you otherwise. Who does he think he is? I, I, I'm sorry, guys. This, oh, makes me so mad. Anyway, let's continue. I believe in God's judgment. Do you think it really matters at the end of the day whether or not I believe that sinners will be tortured forever and ever and ever or not? See that? Do I? Do I? Does it really matter if, if sinners are going to be tortured forever and ever and ever? And see the sarcasm. That's demonic and that's satanic. Because I tell you why, it's demonic and satanic. It's mocking God's perfect judgment, His perfect, righteous, holy judgment. God is a God of holiness. He's a God of great power. He's a God of not only he's not only a god of love he's also a god of wrath and righteous righteous wrath just for an example right the lord has set up the 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 um, courts on the earth for a reason right so if someone for instance murders someone the court system then will have to try that person Okay, and to see, well, okay, are they guilty? And if they're guilty, they go into prison. Probably life sentence. Okay? Now, this guy is mocking this kind of judgment that God has. For instance, that if this murder... <coughs> right, okay. Let's just say the murderer gives his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he doesn't end up in hell because he's, he's repented and he's turned away from his sin. Well, then that's different because the Lord obviously forgives him. So he goes on to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But do you think that God is going to allow an unsaved murderer to go into heaven? And allow an unsaved murderer to not go to an eternal hell and just be burnt up? That makes a mockery of what Jesus did on the cross. Makes a complete mockery of it. But it's basically saying that people are just going to be burnt up and what Jesus did was not a big deal. It's really satanic, guys. This is satanic. And this is why I'm saying this guy is a satanic worshiper. I'm telling you, this guy is a satanic worshiper. This is mockery. 101 mockery of God. And God will not be mocked. Or not? No. Okay. Uh, we can disagree on that, and it's not a fundamental issue of the faith. It is a fundamental issue of the faith, Mario. It has been a fundamental faith. For over 2,000 years, it has been a fundamental truth of the faith. And you, believing that and teaching that, not only are you sending yourself to hell, you're sending loads of people that are listening to you to hell. And let me tell you, you will have to give an account to a God. And you won't be making, you'll have nowhere to make excuses to. There'll be no one to hold in your hand. You'll be on your own. And God will have known every single thought that you've thought. Every single thing that you have done will be open before God. God will bring it all into the light. And if you don't repent right now, you will end in front of the, the Great White Throne Judgment. Where, first of all, you'll be thrown into Hades, which is a holding place. And you will burn in Hades. And then what will happen is, you'll be taken up. And God will judge you again. And then you, then you will go with Satan into the Lake of Fire. And you will burn forever and ever and ever. And you won't be laughing and going, Oh, it's just a torture chamber. Do you really believe in a torture chamber? Wow. Um, if you believe that God's going to have a torture chamber where he's going to keep the wicked to burn forever and ever, sure, maybe I'm wrong. There's a lot of things in Christianity some of us are going to be on doctrinally. You don't get to heaven for your doctrines. Uh Actually, you do, Mario. You do get to heaven for your doctrines. Jesus told us not to um, turn away from sound 
doctrine. If you don't have sound doctrine, you're lost. Absolutely, 100% lost. Um, but I don't know. I'm still having a hard time with that one. You know, to me, it seems pretty simple. We, we talk about God being a just God. We don't care what you think. We, we care about what the Bible teaches. And what the Bible teaches is not what you're teaching right now. This is terrible. You are considered to be a heretic. And the Bible says that you're, you will go into hellfire if you don't repent of this nonsense. Where's the justice in life or eternal torture? I don't see any justice in that. But I do see justice in eternal life or eternal death, meaning death, you're done, you're burned up, the flames consumed you, and each one... Yeah, but the reason why you see that is you don't understand the holiness of God. And you're not saved. And you're blind. You're spiritually blind, spiritually deaf, spiritually dumb, and your words expose yourself. Just how satanic you really are. Just so you know, guys, that this man used to channel demons. He's still doing it. I mean, he can just speak. Like, he, he was a channeler in the New Age. Okay? And uh, he was a yogi. He was one of up in the yogis, right? And they all, when you do that kind of stuff, you invite demons into you. This man is riddled with demons. Absolutely riddled with the things. Let's continue. one of you according to what you did but you're done it don't we don't need to torture you forever um but mo majority of the church disagree with me some even think i'm a heretic for that it's just insanity but she it's not insanity you're racy mario by you saying that's insanity you're basically saying oh well i'm right now all the churches the whole churches are wrong they're all wrong i'm the only one in the last two thousand years <laughs> that believes this i'm sorry for laughing guys but this is ridiculous but, um, yeah, so that's, uh, my belief. That's my belief. On that. My fellow Satanist and 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 my fellow Satanist and... Okay, so this is Dr. Walter Martin talking about hell conscious continual eternal punishment. Now this man, um, Walter Martin was head of this, the original Christian Research Institute. Unfortunately, Hank Hanegro took over. But anyway, I have other videos about him. But um, in this is a very well respected scholar and um, very much knew about apologetics. And he discusses here um, the truth about eternal punishment. So let's play this. Another question that comes up time and time again is the denial of eternal punishing. Okay? Garner Ted Armstrong would say it's eternal punishment, which is an extinction. Seventh-day Adventists, uh, I think, go along with that. They might use a verse, and let's jump off on it, Malachi, last chapter, where the righteous will be standing on the ashes of the ungodly, and they say the ashes there would show that the ungodly have been annihilated. Uh, I've heard you comment on that some other places. Let's jump off of that verse into this thing of annihilation. What is the future of those that die with Christ and those that die without Christ? What does the Bible say? Let's back it up here. There's no Greek or Hebrew word that can be properly translated in context annihilate. And that will be very simply uh, established by reading a lexicon on both Greek and Hebrew. That's point number one. Number two, you can destroy something material but something immaterial cannot be reduced to ashes. And therefore, what Malachi is talking about is the physical properties of the wicked are reduced to ashes. But if I take a light bulb and I smash it on the ground, I have destroyed the function of the light bulb, which is to give light. But nowhere can it be said that I annihilated the light bulb. What happens to man is the body can be destroyed, reduced to ashes. But man was created in the spiritual image of God, according to the book of Genesis, which means if we are spiritual as well as physical, and the Bible says we are, then there is an immaterial nature which goes beyond the life of the body. That's what Garner Ted denies. That's what the conditional immortalists deny. That's what the Adventists deny. That's the only way that they can escape it. 
but there is no real escape because yeah. of scripture Many times they'll look at the word nefesh, but they won't check out the Brown Driver and Briggs lexicon and check out Ruah. Yeah, they don't look at, at language, and they're not really too sharp on dealing with many passages which indicate that there is such a thing as conscious existence after the death of the body. Yeah, Matthew 10, 28 is one of their favorites, which they say, do not fear him that kills the body, uh, but fear him that can, uh, can destroy uh, both soul and body in Gehenna. And they would, uh, first of all, they don't want to tell you that's Gehenna. They want to say that's annihilation. But they're saying uh, both soul and body. I always say, why is it that you got both soul and body there? If it stands for the same thing, why did Jesus have to be redundant on the thing? But that word destroy there doesn't mean destroy and annihilation. No, it means uh, to destroy the function of the thing just as I gave you illustration of the light bulb. Uh, there's no possibility of escaping the fact that Satan is a spirit. And the Bible says that Satan and his demons are going to be tormented uh, day and night, which is a symbol for no cessation, day and night into the endless ages of eternity. Well, it defeats their whole argument. If Satan is a spirit and angels are spirits, fallen angels, and they can be tormented into eternity, why are you fighting so hard about man who is also a spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you think it really matters at the end of the day whether or not I believe that sinners will be tortured forever and ever and ever? Or Okay, I want you to think about this for one minute. Who would it be that would make you want to think that Hell is not forever and ever and ever and ever. Who do you think that? Who do you think would make you want to think that? Do you think it might be just Satan, the father of lies, who has come to kill, steal, and destroy? Hmm. I think so. What do you reckon, guys? Not only do I think so, I know so. And what Mario is preaching is damnable heresy. It's not just a heresy, it's a damnable heresy. It will send you in to the very clutches of hell itself. And when Satan gets you down there and you said to everyone, Oh, it's not eternity. Satan's going to laugh in your face and go, <laughs> You listen to that nonsense. You listen to that Mario fella. But okay, so down here, um, I want you to read Second Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read a couple of verses, but let's do it. For there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. I want you to think of Mario. He sells his t-shirts. He asks you for money all the time. Okay, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Okay, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So, basically the Lord is saying here that Mario is bringing in a damnable heresy. If you die believing that you're going to just annihilate, in other words, you're going to be just burnt up and that's the end of that, trust me, you're not going to heaven. You will be in hell. And you will be there forever. And there will be no way out. No way out. It is appointed once for men to die and then to judgment. 
and you won't be able to beg your way out of hell. Once you get in there, there's no getting out. It's not like prison on the earth where you do a certain amount of time. This is eternity we're talking about. And this is why I'm exposing this because of the fact that I love eternal souls. Eternal souls are the most important thing on this earth. On this earth, we are made in God's image and likeness. This is really important, guys. But anyway, I think I've shown you enough for now. And I'm going to say this. May the Lord bless you. <clears throat> may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. <clears throat> Goodbye for now, brothers and sisters. And I'll talk to you super soon. My fellow Satanist, and 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 my fellow Satanist, and